Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now I paid just over £50 for this Acer Aspire M3300 gaming PC. It's at least 10 years old, it's dusty, it's temperamental and it's perfect for this second episode of fixing broken eBay gaming PCs or FBEG. Now that doesn't really work. Anyway, this old system features a quad-core Phenom processor and according to the label attached to the front of the chassis, ATI Premium Graphics. Who knows in which year the graphics were considered premium, but the fact that it says ATI and not AMD probably means that the GPU isn't so premium anymore. Still, it makes no sense for any PC, including this one, to go to waste, no matter how old or crappy it may be, because someone somewhere will find a use for it. The problem with this one is that the PSU is a bit temperamental, resulting in the system turning on only when it feels like it. All I'm going to do here then is clean it up and replace the power supply, because although it may still work at the moment, it will only be a matter of time before it fails and possibly takes everything else with it. So let's look inside and see what we're at risk of losing if this thing explodes. Everything looks to be in order here, though we are missing the hard drive as described. A lot of sellers tend to do this just for the sake of data protection or because they want to use their drive in a new computer. Before taking the system apart, I did try and turn it on, but nothing happened. So I decided to dismantle the system and test the components individually outside of the case. There was no point cleaning anything up yet, and as I always say, it's worth testing any second-hand system you buy before tinkering around with it. I chose to test these components with the power supply that I'm going to use going forward, which is a Cooler Master MWE500. It's nothing special, but it will handle these components and allow for a future upgrade GPU-wise. I haven't hooked up a hard drive or SSD yet, as this is just a post-test. Much to my relief, the dismantled system got to the BIOS just fine. Now we can actually focus our attention on cleaning up these components because while they aren't actually that dusty, unlike the HP we looked at before, it's always nice to give everything the once over and replace any thermal paste that needs replacing. My cleaning process usually involves blasting things with the electric air duster and removing any finer layers of grime with a small brush. A brush is perfect for all of these cracks and crevices on a motherboard and it can get into the awkward angles of system fans rather easily as well. Brushing individual components can take some time but I often find that it starts to feel quite therapeutic especially on a rare sunny English day like today. As I record this script, it's actually raining, which is <laughs> typical. You've probably spotted the so-called premium graphics card already, which I'll get into the details of later on. But for now, it needs cleaning just like everything else. I thought I might be able to get away with either blowing the loose dust away or going over it with a brush to get it cleaned up quickly. But it turns out that the little single fan is quite a pain in the butt to clean when it's still attached to the PCB. Taking this thing apart is as simple as taking the GT705 apart last time. It uses these little plastic pushpin things that pinch together and slide out of place. A process that never seems to be doable on camera, but once done it should look something like this. I must say I do like the colour of this GPU fan, so if I say nothing else positive about the card going forward, at least I've complimented it somewhat during this video. The fan also comes away from the heatsink by removing four screws and the small single fan can be cleaned with the brush. I'm using one of my sister's makeup brushes that is super soft and ideal for cleaning intricate components like this. I'll leave a link to her sewing and crafts channel in the description below. Once this is done, the card can be repasted and then reassembled. It's just occurred to me that I haven't actually told you what this GPU is, though you may have seen the label in a few earlier shots. This is a Radeon HD 
4350. Now this card sucked in 2008 and it certainly sucks now. That's all you really need to know review wise but it is still capable of handling video playback faultlessly which is handy considering that I just discovered that our Acer machine has a built in Blu-ray disc drive. This has probably doubled the value of the entire system. Before turning our attention to the processor and motherboard combo, I cleaned up the remaining components, including the Wi-Fi adapter, USB adapter port thing. Uh, I'm not sure what this is called, but it adds two extra USB ports to the back of the computer. And I also gave the rear system fan a thorough clean as well. The microfiber cloth had to come out for this one as the grime was pretty stubborn and my good old air blower couldn't do much to shift it. Before putting everything back together, it was time to clean up the CPU and apply some new paste. I don't know what sort of paste Acer used a decade ago, but all I know is that it resembles something between mud and chocolate in both color and consistency. Even isopropyl alcohol had a job sliding through it. After about 20 minutes of vigorous cleaning, the heatsink and CPU came up quite well. The CPU fan also received a much needed clean. All that was left to do here, we'll reassemble the CPU, motherboard and RAM combo a little later on, was give the case a once over and here my expertise in cinematography really shone through as I obscured part of the shot with my fat sausage finger. The electric air duster and microfiber cloth cleaned this up nicely but to be honest it really wasn't that dusty at all, hence my reluctance to remove the optical drives in this instance. With the case cleaned and the new power supply installed, which by the way can be swapped out rather easily, this uses a standard form factor PSU so all I had to do was take the old Acer one out and put this new one in. It was now time to reassemble the aforementioned CPU motherboard and RAM combo which were now gleaming and looking as good as new. This video is structured in a bit of a weird way, I must admit, because I didn't dismantle, clean and then reassemble these parts straight after taking them apart. This was primarily due to, well, shoddy organisation if nothing else, but I've also been pretty busy this week so I've been filming bits here and there and it didn't quite work out in order during the editing process. With everything back in its rightful place and the SATA cables totally not forgotten about at all, cough cough, we were now ready to fire up the system again and see if it works as intended as well as test its general and laughably terrible gaming performance. The graphics card is awful as I'm sure I've stated numerous times but this series is more about reviving old systems and keeping them alive as opposed to upgrading them but this is certainly something that can be done thanks to our new Caller Master PSU. Before selling it on, I'll also add a hard drive to it as well, but for now I've hooked up my Windows 10 SSD to make sure that all is working as it should be. Okay, so the intention with these videos isn't really to test out the uh, gaming performance so much as it is to actually get these systems working again and in terms of achieving that goal well I think we've done it it was as simple as replacing the PSU which was temperamental and by the time it got to me well it may have actually died so I'm glad to see that all of the uh, other components had survived. Now if we talk a little bit about the individual parts, the X4810 CPU and the HD4350, well just like a lot of pre-builts, not just from a decade ago but even today, they are quite horrifically mismatched, the GPU and the CPU that is. I find this a lot with pre-built systems, it's often you'll find that the CPU is holding up a lot better than the graphics card because at the time this HD4350, well, it wasn't really a decent card to pair with the processor anyway. It's it's just a tactic that a lot of companies use so that they can say it's got ATI or AMD graphics or Nvidia graphics or whatever. And it's something that carries on today with GeForce 710 gaming desktops that I'm sure you've seen everywhere. Now the X4810 itself is a quad-core CPU. It is nothing special. In Cinebench R20 it scores about as low as you would expect, but for general usage, well, it's absolutely fine and that's it really. I do believe that when it comes to running modern games you will have a few problems because it is missing 
um, a certain instruction set, I think, but this will be explored in a later video. I have decided that I will upgrade the GPU in this one, um, just for the sake of you know, making it a bit better before I sell it on. The graphics card on the other hand, well, that is the limiting factor no matter what the problems are with the CPU. It doesn't really matter that the CPU can't support certain games because of a lacking instruction set when the graphics card is this crappy because that hinders our performance anyway. This is a system that definitely needs a GPU upgrade and it'll be interesting to see what the CPU can do when paired with more memory and a better graphics card. In terms of the games then for this actual system, well, don't expect much here. Crisis was about the only game I tested and even then at 720p with the low settings, as you can see, the game wasn't exactly what I'd call playable. So as far as fixing up this machine, well, that's a success, but part of me wishes that I hadn't because now I have to suffer the horror of this thing's performance. But there we go. For this video, this is the end. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed it, leave a like, leave a dislike if you didn't. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already and leave a few suggestions down below as to what you think I should upgrade the graphics card to because I've got to admit that I know less about AMD processors, especially the older ones, uh, than I do about Intel processors. I'm going to look into it and leave your suggestions down below because I think we can, uh, we can turn this into something a lot better than it already is. But kicking it across the garden would probably achieve that result. <laughs> no. Seriously, um, thank you for watching and I'll see you all in the next one.